In a collaboration with NASA, Boeing is developing a wing design concept which they call the Transonic Truss Braced Wing or TTBW, a revolutionary new concept which could change the aviation landscape forever. However, despite looking concrete so far, this development is clouded in a bit of controversy as a few accusations fly between rivals. But what actually is this concept? Well, to start off, while Boeing was hesitant on developing new aircrafts, NASA had been at work developing a new wing design concept designed to maximize efficiency. They called this concept the Transonic Truss Braced Wing, or TTBW, which would be tested on an experimental airliner called the Boeing X-66. Now, if you're wondering why the airliner would be called a Boeing, it's because the X-66 is a collaborative effort between NASA and Boeing aimed at developing the next generation of super-efficient aircraft. This is a part of Boeing's Sustainable Flight Demonstrator program, which tallies with their super-ambitious goal of achieving net-zero aviation emissions by 2050. We say ambitious because Boeing has not introduced a commercial aircraft lineup since 2017 and haven't even rolled out an aircraft from the production lines in almost a year. But to be fair though, Boeing had its reasoning. You see, effects of the COVID-19 pandemic added to the groundings of the 737 MAX and the certification problems of the 777X meant that they've had to tighten their budgets and strategy. It's a save costs now, innovate later strategy employed by the hierarchy and Boeing themselves revealed that they don't intend to invest much into a new design until a sufficient advancement in engine or propulsion technology arrives to provide an optimal efficiency boost. The decision makes perfect financial sense when you think about it, as newer propulsion tech might bring improvements that are worth the wait, especially against going for modern designs, which may have to be updated when newer engine technology is released. However, engines are only a part of what makes an aircraft efficient and design is arguably more important. The materials used for the production of aircraft parts, as well as its structure, go a long way in determining the efficiency levels of an aircraft. And one very important part of an aircraft structure is its wings, and especially the wing design. Although often overlooked by most, but with all the new, lighter, thinner and longer composite materials being used in wings today, the design of wings has evolved to suit the required mechanics that make them functional in the skies. We can see this in the relatively higher aspect ratios of the wings of today's airliners, which is good, because a higher aspect ratio means there is less drag and more lift, which automatically makes the aircraft more efficient. Now it could make sense in theory for Boeing to just re-wing existing aircrafts rather than build them, but there would be numerous technical challenges due to the clashing composition and mass of materials, even with modern advancements in production technologies. But luckily for them, NASA actively engaged in the development of the innovative wing design concept aimed at optimizing efficiency. Referred to as the Transonic Truss Braced Wing, or TTBW, this concept would be tested on an experimental airliner known as the Boeing X-66, and it's a game changer. You see, the idea of the transonic wing was originally conceived way back in 2010, but it wasn't until early 2019 that the concept was finally unveiled. But what is so special about the transonic wing? Well, on the experimental aircraft model, the transonic wing sported a new unique design, which is super thin and flexible, due to the composite materials and alloys which it is made of. It is also long and stabilized by diagonal struts, which is in stark contrast to the cantilevered wing designs currently adopted by most aircraft manufacturers. The configuration for the X-66 is based on the Subsonic Ultra Green Aircraft Research Studies, or SUGAR, as it is also referred to, and it's quite genius. You see, the program studied truss bracing and hybrid electric technologies extensively, and it was concluded that the sweep of the aircraft's wings should be maximized so as to be able to cruise at speeds up to Mach 0.8. To put it simply, it would allow the aircraft to glide more in the air, making the plane quieter, use less fuel, and produce fewer emissions, aiming to make air travel more environmentally friendly. NASA had been working on ways to fit swept wings with an aspect ratio closer to that of glider aircrafts, and it's quite genius, really. You see, Boeing's sugar concept had too little sweep on its wings, 
but NASA chose to instead focus on optimizing the airframe of the wing and were able to considerably increase the sweep of the wings. However, they also chose to make the truss brace sit at a slightly different angle to allow it to take load in different directions, which is unlike the truss of some smaller aircrafts, which experience mostly uniform tension when the aircraft is airborne. This makes all the difference because the truss brace is designed to provide some lift to the aircraft, especially at lower speeds, and this trussing also allows the aircraft to have a high aspect ratio and enough sweep to allow the aircraft to fly at transonic speeds. And the two possible designs laid out by Boeing for the transonic wing include the VS-1, slated to hold anywhere between 130 to 160 passengers, and the VS-2, which is to contain a range of 180 to 210 seats in the single aisle configuration everyone expects them to come in. The transonic wings are expected to improve efficiency by 9 to 10 percent, and while this might not sound like much, aircrafts consume a lot of fuel, and saving even 1% of fuel costs could amount to millions of dollars saved each year for a single airline. And when newer propulsion technologies, system integration and light materials are added to the equation, it could even further increase that number to up to 30% more efficiency than the already efficient 737 MAX. This is without mentioning the fact that the aircraft would be much less noisy and much more eco-friendly. So you can imagine how it ties in with Boeing's ambitious goal of achieving net zero aviation emissions by 2050. Now, the aircraft which Boeing and NASA intended to emulate in terms of capacity and aspect ratio was the Boeing 737 MAX 8, although their design would sport a much longer wingspan. But the full-scale demonstrator will utilize a McDonnell Douglas MD-90 with a shortened airframe and some other modifications, scheduled to undergo a year's worth of flight testing at the NASA Armstrong Flight Research Center beginning in 2028. Obviously, this new transonic wing design might pose some unique challenges going forward that could turn out to be a setback for both Boeing and NASA. For one, most airports have gate restrictions which are to set the maximum allowable width of aircrafts that intend to go into the airport. In case you didn't know, but airports commonly charge airlines that use aircrafts with wingspans that are over the required limit, as they usually take up more load. So, a question that could be asked is if it is possible to have an aircraft with an extended wingspan, but in an aspect ratio calibrated enough for the wingspan to remain within airport limits. And the short answer is yes. But this would be difficult as it would involve having a smaller fuselage which could affect passenger comfort or capacity. Now a better solution instead would be to make use of foldable wingtips, a technique Boeing already employs with the 777X. And even though it isn't officially confirmed, this is what most enthusiasts expect Boeing to do. What other ideas would you suggest? Let us know below. So with all the airport restrictions, it would be hard for NASA and Boeing to release the concept's wing design without foldable wingtips, especially if they want the aircraft to be economically feasible. And so far, that doesn't seem to be the case, because the transonic wing is expected to come with a span of 52 meters, which is around 16 meters wider than the average airport gate, and over 6 meters wider than the average runway of an international airport. So some serious work would have to be done on the folding section to ensure the wingspan doesn't pose a problem. And that's not all. You see, fuel storage complications will also inevitably arise due to the ultra-thin wingspan, which means the fuel has to be stored elsewhere. And this could further limit the seating capacity on the aircraft, as well as end up pushing a lot of weight back into the fuselage. The project is also banking on accommodating the next generation of advanced propulsion technologies to power the aircraft's so its viability also relies on the availability or development of the required propulsion technology. So what does the future look like for the transonic truss braced wing concept and what are the controversies surrounding its development? Well, NASA specifically targeted the single aisle design for the new concept as narrow bodies currently enjoy by far the most popularity in commercial aviation add to the fact that Boeing is also looking for a true successor to the 737 family. So the transonic wing concept could just be what they've been collectively dreaming of, 
as the next evolutionary stage of the next generation of narrow-body airliners. However, it would not be all smooth sailing, as the multitude of physical and mechanical properties altered in the concept means there would be some certification challenges. But at the same time, that is to be expected when designing new innovative things. So what issues could arise? Well, Boeing has already noted that bird strikes could prove to be an issue, as well as the effects of icing on the ultra-thin wings, especially at high altitudes, will need to be further assessed, as well as the crashworthiness of the aircraft. Fortunately for the project, a lot of money has and continues to go into this, and it is relatively close to flight testing, so the concept could be familiar to many even before the aircraft is officially introduced, which to us is super exciting. With the first demonstrator flight scheduled for 2028, the most likely engines to be used are the CFM International Rise engines, although Pratt & Whitney 1000G geared turbofans could be within a shout. This is just an assumption based on the fact that Pratt & Whitney are already working with NASA on the hybrid thermally efficient core or high-tech, which aims to provide aircraft engines with multiple sources of propulsion. In the end, we just have to wait and see. Which engine do you think Boeing and NASA will end up choosing? Let us know below. However, there has been some controversy, as Airbus has accused Boeing of getting projects bankrolled by NASA while they cut costs. Boeing has obviously denied this, and has accused Airbus of getting kickbacks from European nations in the past. However, NASA has generally been investing in some research and development for the commercial aviation industry. Their funding for the Transonic Wing project sits at $425 million, which is amortized over seven years, while Boeing and its partners have earmarked the $725 million required in the terms of agreement. Boeing has also reportedly spent $110 million on sustainable aviation research. Besides, Airbus should probably be too occupied with their Wing of Tomorrow program to be pointing fingers at Boeing right now. They're already working on new, highly efficient wing technology and know they have to keep up with whatever generational advancements Boeing might have in store. As for Boeing, they intend to release the aircraft by the middle of the next decade as they aim to achieve net zero aviation emissions by 2050. Maybe we can finally witness the Boeing 797 by then. And finally, one thing is certain. This new wing design concept coming with the X-66 will be a catalyst that could permanently change the way we fly commercially. But what do you think? Will the transonic wing alter the trajectory of the aviation industry? Or is it coming too soon? Please share your thoughts in the comment section and be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.